Hello, Calc Kids. This is Mr. Bean, and we are beginning a new unit today. And the first thing we're going to talk about is how change can accumulate or build up over, over time. Now, before we do that, we need to make sure we understand this phrase, area under the curve. We're going to talk a lot about area under the curve in this these next few units. It's actually pretty easy, but kids will still do it wrong. And that's because of the word under. They think it just means below, and it doesn't mean below. What it means is between the x-axis and the function. These are the two things that we, we shade in between. So for example, here I have the x-axis. Here is this curve, this function curve. And we shade this region right here. This would be considered the area under the curve. So the area from the curve to the x-axis. So on this example, the x-axis is above the curve, and so we would shade above it. So this area would be considered area under the curve, even though it's actually not below the curve. It, in this case, it's above the curve. So that's why you don't want to think under means below. It means between x-axis and the curve. So then on this one here, again, here's this x-axis right down. It's splitting the curve right down the middle. And so now area under the curve actually jumps around here and then here, so it's always between the curve and the x-axis. Okay, so three different examples of area under the curve. Sometimes it's below the curve, sometimes it's above, sometimes it's both. It just depends on where the x-axis is. Okay, so now that you have that, we can start talking about some accumulation of rate of change. So if you have a rate of change function, this is important. The function we're talking about must be a, oops, Get rid of that. It must be a rate of change. Okay, so the function itself is a rate of change. If you have something like that, then the area under the curve gives us the accumulation of change. In other words, how much things are changing by as if you add up this change over time. Let's start off with a super easy example, something we could have done years and years ago in your math class. And that is, let's say you're on a road trip, your car's on cruise control for four, <laughs> four hours. Okay, that's not realistic. You're gonna have to go to the restroom or something during that time. But let's just pretend you're driving at exactly the same miles per hour for four hours, and we're saying 60 miles. Okay, so you already know, all you'd have to do is take 60 miles per hour, times it by four hours, and you're going to get, what is that? 220, 240 miles that you've traveled. Okay, that's not that hard of a problem. So let's relate it to what we're talking about within calculus. And that is, if, let's, if we take the area under the curve, so again, here's my x-axis, and you, you shade everything here up to the fourth hour, because we're only doing the first four hours, so I'm going to shade up to there, we have a rectangle shape. That's the shape of the shaded area that we've just gotten. Now, a rectangle, we can figure out, what's the area of this thing? Well, the width of this is 60 miles per hour, so I'm going to write down 60 miles per hour. And then I'm going to times that by the, the length here of this rectangle is four hours. So times four hours. And then if you do that, we get 60 times four is the 240 that we talked about already. And then the hour here cancels with the hours there. And all you're left with for your units is miles. So how far we've traveled is the accumulation of the rate of change. So again, we have this rate of change. The area represents how far we've gone during that time. Okay, let's do, well, oh, actually, first we got to talk about the units. So the units are, the way we figure it out is we take the dependent units and we multiply it by the independent units. Or in other words, we take the y units and times it by the x units. Y times x for the units. So let me go back to the example I just did and show you that that's what I had done. I took the miles per hour because that was the dependent units and I multiply them by the independent units, hours. So miles per hour times hours, those cancel, and I'm left with miles. So that's how we get the units for the area under the curve. Now let's do a little bit of harder example. As the unit goes on, we will have some crazy functions that we'll have some all these equations for to figure out the area under the curve. But for now, I'm going to give you uh, geometric shapes. So either something like a square, a rectangle, a semicircle, or maybe a triangle that you can see here. That's how we'll figure out the shapes of this. So don't do this, but I'm gonna sh show you if I shaded this whole thing in, you could, you could visualize there's all these different shapes that are going in here. Like I've got a rectangle, maybe I could do that whole rectangle. Then I've got the semicircle, then I've got a triangle here. So there's all these different shapes we've got. So it depends on how you want to break this up to figure out 
our answer to this. So this is, what is this representing even? Oh yeah, water tank. So water is leaking out of a tank. Units are given in the graph. So we have gallons per minute. Again, this is a rate of change and that's important. We have a rate of change that we're going to, uh, to figure out the area under the curve gives us the accumulation of that change. Uh, okay, so let's let's do this. Let's, how about we take this full rectangle right here. I'm gonna do that whole rectangle. I can see that shape. So that's a six by two rectangle. So that's a total of 12 units. And then this is a semicircle. So remember a semicircle is pi r squared. That's a full circle and then divide it by two. So this is going to be pi. The radius of this circle is from the center to the outside is two. So it's pi two squared, so times four, all over two because it's just a half a circle. And, okay, so then I'm gonna write down what that equals. That equals uh, two pi, right? Yeah, that's, so that semicircle represents two pi. And then we have the triangle. Remember, a triangle is one half times the base times the height. Or in other words, we just take a look at the rectangle that we have here formed out to nine minutes. This rectangle, half of it would be a triangle. So therefore split this in half. What do we get here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Half of that is three. So the area down here is three. Now we'll add up all the area under the curve and that will give us the accumulation of change of how much water has leaked out. So let's take the numbers we know easily here, 12 and three, that's gonna be give me 15. And then we need to add onto that this area, which was two pi, so we'll say two pi. And this will give me an exact amount of gallons. Now it is a decimal, pro uh, a decimal. We could do a decimal approximation if it was asking us to do a decimal, but this is the exact answer. So 15 plus two pi gallons have been leaked out of the tank after nine minutes. Now on our last example, we have some weird stuff going on here because this rate of change is dipping below the axis. I think it's the t-axis, yeah, t value. So instead of the x-axis, t, but it's the same thing. So it's dipping below. What that means is here we have a positive rate 10 centimeters per second, five centimeters per second, and then it dips below and now we have negative centimeters per second. Negative, negative, and then it's zero, and then we're positive again. So that means the area that's above is positive rate, negative rate, positive rate. We're going to add the positive rates and subtract this negative rate. Okay, so that's what we have to keep track of. The other trick here, so mean, look at the scale. It's counting by five, 10, 15. So let's uh, let's start figuring all of the areas out. So for this triangle here, what is this? Well, I can see here the, the square is four squares, but every square is a one by five. So it's five, 10, 15, 20. So the whole thing's 20, split it in half. There, that's 10. So that area represents 10. Let's do, how about this area right here? So this area represents, uh, that whole square is nine, but we're gonna do half of it. So nine times five is 45. So the whole thing is 45 and then split 45 and a half, we get 22.5. And we just have to remember that that's negative area because it's underneath. And then uh, how about this one right here? I could do, I could do this one, one, two, three, four, if I can count six, Six, right? Yeah, six times five, that's 30. So that area is 30. And then this one is one, two, three, but split in half. Let's do three first. Three times five is 15. So half of 15 will give us 7.5 for this area right here. That's what that is. That one's 22.5, this one's 30. And then we have this positive area here, which is gonna be the same as this one, because it's one, two, three, four, half of that. All right, 10. So it's the same as this. That's how I figured this one out, okay. So how far is the particle from its starting position after 10 seconds? So we start off and then we're moving 10 to the right because we're moving along the x-axis. So I'll start off by having a, we're moving positive 10. Then I subtract 22.5 and then I subtract 30 because remember anything underneath that x-axis or t-axis, anything underneath here is going to be negative area. So I subtract the 30 minus the 7.5, and then I'm adding the 10 because it is above. That area is going to be above. So let's see, 10 plus 10 is 20. And then I, uh, let's add up all the negative area here. So the negative area adds up. If we put this all together, that is 60. That's gonna give me negative 40. So now let's answer the question. How far is the particle from its starting position after 10 seconds? 
it is 40, what, centimeters? Yes, because the seconds will cancel when I multiply them. So I have 40 centimeters to the left. And there is our answer to that problem. So the negative represents that I would be moving left based on this problem here with the x-axis stuff going on. Okay, so now we actually already can answer part B. So from two seconds to eight seconds. So from right here to right here at eight seconds, basically how, what, how far is the particle from its position at two to eight? So this negative area represents that it traveled left. So it's gonna say left, and then if we added all those numbers up, we'd have 60. That's what I got from up here when I got that 60 there. So left, 60 centimeters. Okay, we've covered it all. So as a summary, just remember we're doing the area under the curve is between the line, the curve, and the x-axis. So it might be underneath the x-axis, it might be above it, depending on where the curve is. And that this represents an accumulation of change. How much, whatever this rate of change is, how much it's actually changing things by. So in this case, centimeters per second, it would be how many centimeters it's changing by since we cancel out the seconds. Okay, that's everything. So rock that master check and I'll see you back at our next lesson.